Could technology save thousands of lives and actually increase gun sales? And will the greatest personal firearm salesman of all time, Barack Hussein Obama, finally bring peace to the battle over the Second Amendment? I'm Scott Ott with Stephen Green and Bill Whittle, and this episode of Right Angle is brought to you by the members at BillWhittle.com. Well, earlier this year, President Obama ordered the Justice Department to come up with a set of standards for so-called smart guns as a guideline for what law enforcement agencies need in weapons designed to be fired only by their rightful owners. This summer, the DOJ released those guidelines, and there's some legislation awaiting action in Congress related to that. Advocates say that smart guns or personalized handguns could save countless lives by making it more difficult for children and others to accidentally discharge a weapon or to commit suicide. New Jersey actually passed a law in 2002 that would ban so-called dumb guns, currently just called guns, within three years of the first production smart weapon to hit the market. That deadline is upon us. The NRA says it's not against smart guns, but opposes efforts to mandate them like the New Jersey law. The White House says it's not trying to ban anything, but to encourage use of smart guns by law enforcement, hoping success in the field would encourage private sector manufacturers and customers. Now, Stephen Green, if safer guns would encourage more people to buy them, wouldn't that be a good thing? So what's wrong with the federal government nudging the industry in that direction? I'm so tired of being nudged. Keep your hands to yourself, Washington. That's the first thing I'd like to say. Oh boy, where to begin on this? Uh, you know the technology exists right, right, right now. I've got, uh, I've got an iPhone here. It's got the little thumbprint reader. I do that, and boom, it opens up. Oh, well, it didn't open up this time, which, which is kind of my point. My thumb wasn't at, at quite, quite the right angle. But you've usually got uh, 95% success rate. The problem is, you know, if your hands are really dirty, or if they're wet, things that that might occur in the outdoors, or say in a in a rainy alley somewhere, the the accuracy of those thumbprint readers drops to a third maybe even less. Uh, you know, one of the first things I do when I get out of the shower in the morning is I try and wake up my iPad to see where I am on my on my shower playlist that I that I keep running. And half the time I end up having to punch in the code because sure enough, my thumb's kind of dry from the towel, but not all the way dry. And this is not something you want in a, in a firearm. Look, a, a safe gun is one that fires when you pull the trigger every single time. Anything else is, is, is a dangerous piece of electronics gear that you just can't fully trust. Uh, like, you remember the story when, uh, the stories, plural, when, uh, when Google Maps first came out and the map data wasn't that good and you had people relying on the computer to be smart for them driving into into rivers or 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 uh, off of cliffs or something and yet the guy just just this year who put his tesla into what he thought was automatic mode and drove straight into a uh, straight into a semi carrying uh, something on a on a flatbed i can't remember what it was now that fooled the computer and this guy just kind of kicking back uh not paying attention let the computer take charge and he ended up dead this is this is always a concern when you put your trust not in your own brain, not in your own training, not in your own skills, but in electronics to make the world safe for you. You can't trust a computer chip to make the world safe for you. You can't trust Washington to make the world safe for you. The only thing you can do is to have skills and training and the time to maintain them. Now, Steve, let me follow up with you because sure. some of the smart gun technology prototypes actually use that kind of biometric fingerprint reading uh, technology, or even there was the New Jersey Institute of Technology developed uh, a system years ago, actually, where it would actually sense your grip. However, um, some of the technology involves wearing either a ring or a watch that has either an RFID chip in it or a magnetic, uh, some sort of magnet that also triggers the gun. So it wouldn't necessarily be a, a biometric metric kind of scan and a handgun like that with the accessory required to be able to fire it generally costs in the neighborhood they're going to estimate of of 12 to 1600 dollars whereas oh. a normal sort of Glock you know 40 caliber handgun is going to be in the neighborhood of 600 dollars so let me ask you this isn't it a good thing that this technology makes it more expensive to own a firearm because that's good for the economy <laughs> 
<laughs> no, you know this is the uh, that that is that is the uh, the the New Deal fallacy. Uh, when confronted with the uh, cratering economy and 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 prices heading towards the cellar, the New Deal, uh, FDR and his group of idiots got it into their skulls. This is real history that the way to make people richer was to make everything more expensive. And uh, a bunch of liberal uh, economists at the uh, University of Los Angeles a few years ago did a study that showed that Roosevelt and his New Deal idiots prolonged the Great Depression by seven years with this absolute nonsense. And it's just the same with, uh, with firearms or, or anything else you might want to buy. They were literally slaughtering hundreds of thousands of baby pigs to yeah. keep the por- the price of pork yeah. artificially high. Um, Bill Whittle, I know you're a big fan of co-opting the narrative of the left. So shouldn't we get behind federal efforts to subsidize and otherwise promote smart guns in order to strip those gun grabbers of one of their most effective arguments that guns are super dangerous? Uh, out here in L.A., you can see uh, the smart car. Um, the smart car was marketed out here. It's about the size of a shopping cart. Yeah. It's, it's fully <laughs> street legal. It's, it's fully street legal. They, they're allowed on all the highways. They're very, very tiny. And you used to see people driving them around because um, they were trendy and cool. And obviously, they're saving the planet, unlike the rest of us who are intentionally burning our children to death with our, with our awesome V8s. Um, but they were very, very unsafe because mass is mass and there's nothing you can do about that. In fact, I saw one of these memes with a smart car that had been compressed to half its normal length, which oh. is, you know, this. The whole front of it was taken off, and down at the bottom it said, smart car uh, struck a squirrel, and, you know, <laughs> and, and the squirrel's okay. Um, <laughs> but I say this only because whenever I hear the word smart something, I'm, I'm generally inclined to think that maybe it's not so smart. I will say this, Scott, in its defense, if I had a house full of kids and this thing was biometrically taking my grip, I would seriously consider it. My rationale would be, I'm not going to have to draw this thing fast if it's in the top of a drawer someplace or if it's in a shelf. It's not going to be a, you know, a quick draw situation. Uh, but if you're talking about a fob or something like that, a ring or a, or a little you know, thing you put on your keychain, I don't see where the benefit is. If somebody's you know, smart enough to steal your gun, one of your kids, let's say, they're smart enough to steal your keys too. So look, I think the thing that's most telling about this is the idea that you can legislate away suicide uh, and things like that, that you can legislate away or technologically, uh, t- you know, techni- technologically engineer your way away from suicide. Uh, there's a county somewhere in America that, that basically made it against the law for the river to rise higher than the banks. And the <laughs> Pope stood out there when the comet was approaching and issued a famous proclamation, a papal bull, to stop the, the comet. And, and people believe this. So... This is the thing that I think is most um, alarming about this. It's always nice to have extra choices. It could be very cool. Who knows? But, but the idea that we're going to make people buy these things because then we will be safe is to once again put our faith in legislation rather than character. Yeah. Well, whatever your position on smart guns, you must know that after three decades of experimentation, the idea still has not caught on. That's because the most important feature, as Steve indicated, of any firearm is that it will work when you need it most, 100% of the time. Now, as charming as it might be to activate your Glock the way you do your iPhone, the prospect of getting locked out, or of even the slightest delay when milliseconds count, is enough to kill the market for such weapons. New Jersey's heavy-handed ban threat has had the unintended consequence of stifling smart gun production because manufacturers knew that as soon as one went on sale in a store, the clock would start ticking on the Garden State's non-smart gun ban. Government pressure, whether by guidelines or subsidies or outright bans, can do nothing to deal with the 300 million ordinary firearms already in circulation. In any case, criminals, by definition, I prepare yourself, disobey laws. But perhaps the most frightening feature of the smart gun concept is not that it might fail, but that it might work all too well. Several prototypes include networking technology that would disable the trigger in a school zone, for example. If the government can neuter it there, what's to prevent them from disabling it anywhere? For Bill Whittle, Stephen Green, and the Right Angle team at BillWhittle.com, I'm Scott Ott. 
Thank you to the members at BillWhittle.com for making this possible.